In this video, I'm gonna show you how we did a deep energy retrofit to this 100-year-old double-width brick home. I'll be covering the insulation and air barrier details as well as the heating and ventilation system. I'll also be sharing some challenges that we faced along the way, including something we are dealing with right now. I'm Casey Gray, the founder of The Conscious Builder, and on this channel, we help you build and live more consciously. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and don't forget to check out the links in the description below. Before we get into the video, I have something that I want to share with the contractors watching this. With everything that's going on in the industry, you need to be prepared to handle any kind of conversation effectively, especially the tough talks or the less than ideal situations. Stressing and arguing are huge drains on your energy and time, and this trickles into every area of your business and your life, hurting your health and your relationships, and ultimately your bottom line. And that is why I've created a new resource for you at the Conscious Builder Academy called Priming for Tough Conversations. My wife, Natasha, who is a former psychotherapist, was in school when I started my business. And I specifically remember telling her that I didn't need to know all that stuff. When am I ever going to use it? But now that is 90% of what I do in my business. So together, her and I have created this PDF handbook to help you show up for those tough conversations, calm, prepared, and in control. It's a ton of value at a great price, so check it out at the link below or go to ConsciousBuilderAcademy.com. This is a 1920s double width brick home, which is about 1,100 square feet with a 300 square feet addition, which was done in the 1940s. Originally, the homeowners considered a new build, but ended up opting for the retrofit option instead because of budget and wanting to conserve the original structure. Because of the lack of insulation, old windows, no thought put into air sealing because we weren't thinking that way back then, this home, like most old homes, was very uncomfortable to live in. Inconsistent temperatures throughout the home and drafts are all too common in homes like this one. Outside of the comfort and efficiency issues, the foundation needed underpinning. The grading was all sloping towards the house, which meant there was water issues in the basement and the chimney was falling off the home. To top it all off, we ended up having to deal with the craziness that COVID brought to the world and to the construction industry. Needless to say, it was an interesting project. For the original part of the home, we worked through many iterations of how to do the insulation and air sealing details. For the walls, we ended up going with a sort of grid that was attached to the outside of the building, and then we spray foamed everything in between with closed cell spray foam. The main reason we ended up going with this was because of structure. This is what we worked out with the engineer, what we felt most comfortable doing because the masonry was not in great condition either. This structure along with the spray foam ultimately locked all of the existing masonry in place. The engineer specified the requirements for the grid, but essentially it was blocks of wood fastened to the brick with two by fours installed in opposite directions on top of those blocks to form an opening for the spray foam. The team also had to take the time required to, to make sure that everything was as plumb as reasonably possible because we all know these old houses are far from being plumb level or square. The exterior had to be tarped before spray foam because the foam may not adhere properly to the brick if it's wet. We also had to build scaffolding around the house so that the work could be done safely. This required us to do the spray foam in stages. Generally, we try to avoid spray foam because of how harmful the product is in terms of off-gassing, but in some cases, it is the best option, and we believe this was one of those cases. We ended up getting an approximate R value of R31, but it did vary a little depending on the section because in some areas having more thickness than others because of the original building being out of plumb. But in either case, we averaged out around R31. The closed cell spray foam acts as the air and vapor barrier in this case. And this was another reason for choosing this product and this method. 
We also did not want to do this on the interior because we would have had to lose valuable floor space and we would have had thermal bridges at the floor assemblies, both at the main floor and the second floor. For the addition, we were able to get more insulation. We framed the interior and had it spray foamed and had two layers of rigid on the exterior for a total of about R61. For the roof, we went up and over it. We cut the eaves off and carried the spray foam from the wall up to this point. The team then insulated over the existing sheathing with two layers of three inch rigid styrofoam for a total of R30. And on the underside of the roof, they did another layer of Rockwell Comfort Bat for an R22, so a total of R52. The team then framed on top of this foam to create the required airspace and structure to support the new steel roof and eaves. For the foundation, we had two layers of styrofoam meshed and parged about five feet down from the bottom of the siding. So this isn't five feet below grade. From the bottom of the siding, we did that five feet and we did three inches of insulation out from the wall to prevent the frost from getting into the ground and getting to the foundation. So this saved us the headache of digging all the way down to the bottom of the foundation in such a tight area. One of the client's main motivators for this project was to get off of fossil fuels. And because electricity is so expensive in our air, having a high performance wall assembly is extremely important. With this done, they cut their gas line and went with an air source heat pump central system and an air source heat pump hot water tank and an ERV for their fresh air. Now we'll be sharing a video with Simon, who is the homeowner, once the interior is ready to show, because he's taking care of this himself and they still have a lot of work to do. This house is also specced for a 10 kilowatt solar system, which would bring it to a net zero status whenever they decide to move ahead with this part of the project. Since projects like this are not common and very custom, we sometimes run into issues after we complete the work. And in this case, we are currently diagnosing an issue which resulted in significant ice and moisture buildup in one of the soffit areas. We believe it's the result of the steel beam install where we were unable to cover the ends with spray foam. But once we get this resolved, we'll be sharing how we diagnosed the problem and what we did to then fix it. If this project got your attention, you'll likely be very interested in what we did on this 1860 stone farmhouse. You can check out the video here, but be sure to like this video and subscribe too because we will also be sharing a video with the homeowner talking about how much better the home is to live in now. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray and remember to live consciously.